so I have been living my life in segments between Asheville and Asheville and between seeing you and it has been amazing how much has shifted for me so I am starting to really understand the subtleties I'm, I'm scared <laughs> okay the subtleties of the teaching and how it relates and that's um, a really good word you've chosen there subtleties because it's vibration that you are translating it is quite subtle isn't it totally yeah but the more you have experiences then the more obvious those subtleties become until then it's not so subtle then you just have true knowing even Esther was guessing for a moment there huh. she wasn't really sure until it played out and then she was more sure and next time she has an experience like that she'll be more sure yeah totally yeah so last fall I heard this thing that I when I was here and it was just a mantra for me and it was simple it was like if I want something don't think about it I left here thinking that like if I want something my inner being knows don't think about it and then things started just coming it was just really simple and it's counterintuitive to what most think because they think they have to work hard at it but they don't realize that they bring to it their expectations that haven't been working out so if you don't think about it then you allow a clear path for it to come about yeah yeah okay so my question okay so this question I prepared in advance so I didn't have the energy of the question while I was sitting here it was born out of a lot of contrast for me and someone else and the contrast was a four-year relationship that was virtually okay so I'm talking about sex but this is the subtlety this is where the subtlety is for me so it was like virtually like a sexless relationship and I ended the relationship in August and actually through attraction 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 I found a romance with someone who also had the same experience of being coming from a relationship that was sexless and had the most magnificent experience like I was sitting here thinking probably in the top 3% of anyone's sexual experience ever in the history ever and I just that, that thought just came to me and I knew it was Abraham saying like this is yeah okay so so here's the subtlety I have been listening to recordings and I'm starting to hear something that Jerry you had kind of talked about with Jerry when he wasn't talking when he wasn't wanting to talk about sex in the seminars from the Napoleon Hill book he left the part out about sexual transmutation mm -hmm. yeah. okay so the subtle part is I'm wondering like in that experience it was conditional obviously because it was sex but it was the most personified or physical experience of what interacting with my vortex is like for like several I mean hours <laughs> so this is the thing and it was just that for both of us it was agreed upon perfect thing without any okay so here's the thing so there's a question in here somewhere the, the question none is, of them will hear it but there's a question in here somewhere the question is that I want that for my business I want that for everything else so this is the thing like I learned about experiencing with my vortex through that experience like being able to have that flow un, un blockaded experience through that sexual experience but and the other thing is I want to see this very magical person again but it's conditional so I don't want to think about it so the question is how do you when you have a mind-blowingly physical fabulous experience like that when you experience the manifestation of something that's been in the process of becoming for a while and you leave yourself in a place of non-resistance about it so that you you get the full manifestation of it that's the question we, we're just restating your question more in the way that we want you to understand that it works okay so continue the question so I think it's I'm wondering is it possible to have an experience again like that but not be confused but not think that's 
that's connecting with my source because it wasn't. Well, let's talk about the elements of this because everything that you said is vibrationally accurate. And the reason that it's vibrationally accurate, the obvious reason is because you lived it and you did a very good job of describing it as the vibration of it is. So let's talk about this in light of what we were just talking about. And then we'll get right to the heart of your question. When you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. So through that four year relationship, you in knowing what you didn't want, the absence of something delicious, you were launching the rockets about what you did want, but you didn't allow yourself to it for quite a while. In other words, you build up quite a bit of the problem at the same time that you were building up quite a bit of the solution. Yes. Deprivation causes that kind of hunger and that kind of hunger is a powerful point of attraction. So all of that is taking place, uh, maybe a lot of it without you even being aware of it. And then you came into a conversation through this work, maybe, and maybe other places too, where you came to a decision or an understanding that brought about a decision that when you think about something from the point of view of it, it, you're not getting what you want, that you just keep compounding that. And so you wisely decided not to think about it because you understood at some level, maybe a full conscious level, that this subject of sexuality has two ends of the stick, what is wanted in absence of it. And that if you kept thinking about it based upon what you'd been living, that very highest probability in fact almost a certainty would be that you would hold yourself in that same vibration of deprivation so you did your best and you did very well at getting focused on other things and taking that it was equivalent to meditation in that you quieted your mind about it you quieted your resistance about that and in the moment that resistance no longer exists when you don't offer resistance to what you want, what you want comes and it comes fast. In other words, came into your experience. Now, everything that you want relative to a relationship didn't come. You would like longevity. You would like a long-standing relationship. You'd like much of the stuff that you had in that other relationship to be present in a relationship that also includes that. But just the same, you understand that in the absence of thought and therefore in the absence of resistance, something that you had been wanting for a long while came and it really came in a wonderful example of what alignment to what you want really is all about. And so now what's your question from there, from understanding that? So now what? So if I were to have another encounter, like how can I but now you're not following your own advice now you're thinking about it now you're thinking about it and you're thinking about it from a problematic position now you're thinking about it a little bit from a lack based position just a little bit what if you said oh that not thinking about it worked really well what if you said oh I put plenty of things in the vortex about a relationship what if you really took to heart what you decided and what worked for you before what if you just stay off the subject again for a while and see what happens next and how do you do that how did you do that you did it you told us you did it you did it you know you did it we know you did it and you see what came as a result of that so what are you saying okay I think that because it was such a powerful experience it's easy for me to like go back to like oh, well, you can think about the powerful experience. And think about something else? Oh, you can think about every part of that that you want to think about. You can think about that powerful experience. Just don't think about the absence of it. Don't just think that it was temporary. Just don't think that it went away. In other words, as long as you're thinking about the aspects of it that were pleasing to you, you, are, you remain a vibrational match to it. But what you've got to stay off the subject of is... How am I going to find this person again? Or will this person come to me again? In other words, the things that feel uncomfortable to you when you think about them, those are the things that you want to ignore or avoid. Although you can't because there's no avoiding. Law of attraction won't let you avoid. So you have to think about other things instead. Okay, so I think this cuts to like my real... You see, the reason that Napoleon Hill put this book of sexual transmutation in his Think and Grow Rich book is because he knew that that was a subject that a lot of people would find resonance with. 
he knew that that was a subject where specific focus is offered and specific focus often with two people so when two people are focused upon same intention at the same time often not always but they're not thinking about all those other things that are in their vibrational way and so he thought that that was a really good conversation to have about when you have a simple focus about something and you don't clutter it up with a lot of other things that then you come to a culmination that is really pleasing to you and it really speaks about the creative process in every way doesn't it so it's possible to engage something so on the extreme of the spectrum like I guess what I why do you call it on the extreme of the spectrum when it was only everything that you've been asking for relative to that subject in other words are you just shocked that the universe can deliver to you all of the things you've been asking for it was just so I wanted sex but I didn't expect that <laughs> black and white with this stuff like if it's either contrast or it's the full thing it, and, and that if I if I think about this then I'm gonna like bring about other contrasts this is why we say words don't teach this is why it's helpful for you to have heard what we said as we began here and you've heard it many times although there were new things here this morning and then you think about the experience that you had and then you hear us explain how that comes about words don't teach its life experience it teaches and so you've had this wonderful magnificent life experience personal experience where you know how you felt and you know what you did about it and you know what happened next so just keep doing that relative to every subject that matters to you you've got the formula you've got the formula that is the formula the formula is want it and notice when you're thinking about the opposite of what you want and then when you've had all of that thinking about what you don't want long enough in other words you put a lot in your vortex and you might be the first to say in fact we would think you would be the first to say that four years of deprivation was worth all of that it was worth all of that but you don't have to deprive yourself in other words you can come to those conclusions earlier but just understand what the process is and you had a real life experience that shows you exactly how it works and how you worked it you see so your question to us what was the question how do I how do I have more of that without engaging the lack of it therein lies your quest that's the formula to deliberate creation how do I think about what I want without engaging the other end of the stick and we say oh hear this hear this hear this in truth you can't because every subject is two subjects one created the other in other words one couldn't exist without the other they're part and parcel of each other you just have to decide how you want to feel and which way you're leaning how you want to feel and which way you're leaning when you feel appreciation about having plenty of money to spend isn't there an awareness that it wasn't always that way or isn't there the other end of that stick don't you have to focus yourself deliberately and how do you know how you're doing there are two ways how it feels do you feel frisky and exhilarated and excited and uplifted or do you feel pensive and worried and frustrated and ornery that's one way to tell which end of the stick you're leaning toward and the other way is how it plays out in your immediate future really good conversation got it thank you this is a really good time for a segment of refreshment